Hi, I'm Andrew Watson from Creative Guitar Studio. Thanks for joining me for another one of my weekly guitar blogs. It's March 27th, 2016, and this week we're going to be doing a lesson on a guitar chord mapping study. This week's question was sent in from Chris. He's out in Danbury, Connecticut, and he wrote in with this email. I just joined a band and we're rehearsing weekly now. Things are going well enough, but I'm finding that I need to quickly expand my chord knowledge. I've messed around with the cage theory, but I found it to be quite overwhelming. Can I apply a scale down version of it so I can learn chords a lot faster. My knowledge needs to improve mostly with seventh chords. From Chris in Danbury, Connecticut, USA. Well, hey, thanks for writing in, Chris. There's nothing like joining a band and getting uh, exposed to a whole bunch of unknown music, you know, where uh, you realize maybe you've got some weak areas in your guitar playing. And, you know, after we learn the open chords and we'll learn the triads, uh, most people know them as bar chords along the neck. The uh, next category up the people usually start studying are the seventh quality chords you know they're generally a fairly weak area in uh, most people's playing so in this uh, lesson what we're gonna do is look at mapping three regions of the neck with the most common seventh uh, chord types out there the major seven minor seven and dominant seventh chords then we're gonna take those chords and put them into chord progression exercise to help them get better and better in your guitar playing all right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, learning some chord voicings that are really important around, uh, based around a system that I use a lot. If you follow my lessons online and you're familiar with uh, how I teach, uh, I have mentioned this quite a few times already. It's what I call the three main neck regions, open to fifth, fifth to tenth, and then tenth to fifteenth. I tend to you know, apply a lot of information within these three regions, uh, mainly the just re because the guitar is around five frets long, so you know, when you you know, plus or minus a fret in either direction. So when you go into these different regions, you're really encapsulating, you know, all the notes that you need to pretty much work on any kind of chord voicing shape, arpeggio, or scale idea. So the first thing that we're going to do here in mapping out different voicings for chord types, and I would suggest of any kind of chord that you want to develop, it doesn't matter what it is, maybe it's some extensions of ninths or elevenths, or maybe some of the altered chords or inversion processes, whatever it is, this three-part, uh, three-region neck concept is very, very useful, uh, and it's going to be uh, great for us today as well when we're going to be going through this chord mapping study. So first thing I want to do is we're going to be doing a bunch of exercises based out of the key of G major, and uh, so we're going to start, or, well, G major 7 is going to be our first chord, but we're also going to do G minor seven uh, G dominant seventh and uh, you know get those associations on the neck as well so uh, starting with G major seven we're going to begin down the low neck region and we're going to take a look at this very common G major seven chord voicing off third position there's the root major seven there's our major third and then up on top is our perfect fifth and, uh, and you can just uh, form the chord voicing I would kind of advise against barring there I'd probably uh, recommend more an idea of index finger and then third and fourth fingers with the middle finger finger up on top. So uh, practice that voicing. I think it's going to be a little bit better in the long run. So uh, anyway, that's the uh, lower neck region version of that chord. Let's go to the middle now. This is a great chord voicing, especially if you like some of the soul R&B stuff. Uh, is a very nice sound in the middle of the neck. Smooth jazz, pop jazz, those kind of sounds are just fantastic with this version. It's right across through the chord tones there, root third, fifth, and seventh of the G major voicing. It's a really nice one. And we're going to go next to the upper neck region. This is a really nice one too. I'm always surprised at how many people actually know this voicing. This is a uh, second inversion uh, with the, the fifth in the bass. So you can see the D is down there below on the 12th fret of fourth string. G root is located on the third guitar string. There's our B, our major third, and then the F sharp, the major seven, up on top. You can just bar that with your index finger and uh, use your uh, third finger to reach forward and grab that upper tone. Uh, I didn't really talk uh, in respect to a fingering on that other voicing that we were looking at because it's really straightforward. Small finger, ring finger, or third, you know, fourth finger, third finger, and then index just barring, so really straightforward shape. But that's uh, that's all of them. Those are the, the first batch that I would work through on gaining some control over the G major sevens on the guitar neck. And uh, next thing that we're going to do is flip over to the world of minor seven with that uh, G root. So here we are on G minor seven as our layout. Uh, let's start down in the low end of uh, the neck here with the low neck region. A uh, very common fingering is a real favorite of a lot of players. I know Stevie Ray Vaughan really liked this one too. Middle finger would take the bass note. Third finger would lay flat. Uh, you could bar on this one. You know, a lot of times, uh, times people will add in the, the fifth interval right there. Um, 
it's a different sound, in my opinion, when you bar, uh, as opposed to using your middle finger here and laying your third finger flat. So I usually in my studio stress that uh, f the fingering of being a, a two and then three barring on that particular voicing. Uh, moving off to the uh, middle of the neck, this is a really interesting minor seven chord voicing because this one does not contain the fifth. It just has the root and then it goes to the minor third, the minor seventh, and then there's an octave of that root up on the second guitar string. So really cool shape. I like the sound of it. It has a very warm sound and uh, I think it's because that fifth isn't there and it sort of is a little bit kind of smoother around the edges. So one of my favorites for sure. Jimi Hendrix would use that once in a while too. And then up on the neck here uh, we have our uh, Again, second inversion uh, process, uh, but now you can see the tones are getting a little bit scattered here. Um, you know, you could use middle and ring and then index and then fourth finger to grab that upper note. But uh, again, with that second inversion process, uh, dealing with the minor seven, you know, having, of course, that flat three and that flat seven it makes for a little bit different chord voicing to get your fingers wrapped around. But that takes care of all the voicings uh, around the neck for uh, the uh, minor seven chord. We got our low neck region in the middle of the neck with that interesting shape with no fifth present. And then up in the top there, we of course have our uh, second inversion process that we've been working on through this lesson plan. So uh, let's head finally to the last chord here, the dominant seventh voicing. Uh, and uh, we're going to deal with G, dominant seventh, of course, starting in the low end of the neck. This is kind of more of the jazz guitar player's fingering. A lot of people will know this chord better with the fifth chord tone there and, you know, doing it as a giant bar chord. That's okay, but again, you know, if you learn this voicing, I think it has a really different sound. Um, you know, there's our root, the flat seven, and uh, there's the major third, and then there's a perfect fifth on top. Uh, you just basically finger that going like index, and then middle, and then the uh, small finger with the uh, third finger up on top there. So it's a little bit of a squished up fingering, but you know, once you get used to it, it's not too, too bad. Let's move to the middle of the neck. This is a very common dominant seventh chord voicing. Most people will learn this very early on, down in the low region of the neck here as a C dominant seventh chord but once again you know this voicing has no fifth it's just root major third flat seven to you know to clarify the sound of the dominant seventh and then up on the top there's our octave so it's you know got a nice kind of warm sound to it and um, I quite like this one I use it a lot it's in a lot of tunes that I'll put together or if I'm jamming I'll use it a lot too but uh, on the upper neck region here uh, here's our major s our dominant seventh pardon me uh, with the bar going on and then the high note on top I usually play that with the second finger although I've met a lot of players over the years that like to use their third finger with the index barring. I'm also always really surprised at how many people know this chord. You know, they've picked it up out of some, you know, a blues player's uh, repertoire or, you know, maybe they found it in old Stevie Ray Vaughan or a Jimi Hendrix tune or something, but it's a really nice sounding chord. I, like I was saying earlier, I really quite enjoy that idea of the uh, fifth in the bass uh, on that upper, you know, version. But, you know, something that I should mention, uh, I'll just turn on all those other chords uh, on the examples here. Um, remember that the blue dot, if you've been wondering what that blue dot is, that's the root. So, you know, we're dealing in this case with G dominant seventh chords. Those are the Gs. Those blue dots are the Gs. So what that means, uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll just turn a couple of these guys off here. So what that means, let's take this low region uh, chord here. If if this is a G at the third fret G on the sixth string root, right? If you slide that forward by, let's say, a whole step, to this A tone here, then you're going to have an A dominant seventh. If you slid it again a whole step higher, this is the B up here, you'd have a B dominant seventh. So remember, the shapes are, I guess you could call them global, you know, they can slide anywhere that you want them to there. As long as the root is well aware to you of what it is, you can form any kind of chord you want. You know, this happens to be a G dominant seventh because the third fret of the sixth string is a G. Uh, if I slid it down a whole step here to this low F off the first fret of the sixth string, I'd have an F dominant seventh chord. It's really quite uh, simple and you know that's one of the really big benefits too, starting to understand what we refer to generally as movable chord shapes because once you know and uh, how to move around a fingering voicing or a pattern, you know, do these, these are just geometrical shapes, slide them anywhere you want around the neck and you're going to get the chord type that you need for whatever song it is that you're going to be jamming on. So anyway, we're going to wrap this end of the lesson up and we're going to head to the studio next. I want to play through a chord progression and I want to apply all these different shapes that we've been discussing here. So let's head to the studio and do some jamming.
Well, now that you have a good idea on what the fretboard shapes look like for the different major seven, minor seven, dominant seventh chord patterns uh, in the three regions of the neck that we discussed, our next plan is going to be going and taking a look at the application of all these different chord voicings. So, you know, with any new shapes that you want to learn, you know, how to apply and integrate into your playing, it's always going to be best initially developed just using some short practice chord application exercises, practice progressions. I generally write them as uh, around four bars long you know when just looking at doing some new jams on some new chords they've become a pretty big part of how I've developed my uh, entire creative guitar studio curriculum all over uh, all the years uh, if you own any of the uh, introductory or intermediate lesson plans I'm sure you've seen that they are very beneficial as you're going through the curriculum uh, now in this application I have a four bar study in the key of G major it goes from the uh, tonic chord of G major 7 into the uh, three chord which is B minor 7 and then we're going to move up into C major 7 chord and then we're going to have a D dominant 7th chord so once again we've got G major 7 B minor 7 C major 7 and D dominant 7th now this set of changes we usually refer to in the harmonic analysis of it as a uh, 1 3 4 5 set of chord changes in the key center now, what we're going to do with this is play it in each of the three fingerboard regions. So once again, that's open to 5th, 5th to 10th, and then 10th to 15th. And we're going to do a big review of all the chords that we took a look at in the, uh, in the theory portion of the video when I had that screen capture shot of all the uh, shapes on the guitar fingerboard. So in getting started, what I'm going to do is play down the progression in the lower region of the neck to get things going. What I'm going to use down here is I'm going to have the uh, sixth string root, G major, 7 chord and then I'm going to go into that uh, second inversion B minor 7 that's uh, built off fourth guitar string I'm going to shoot down into an open position C major 7 chord and then go up into third position for the D dominant 7th okay here's how it sounds So now that takes care of open to fifth fret. Next up, we're going to go to the fifth and tenth fret region, that span of frets in there. We're going to start off with a fifth string root G major seven chord in seventh position. Take care of the B minor seven with that sixth string root minor seven chord voicing. That's that one where I was saying to bar with third finger. And then move up a half step into the eighth fret C major seven. Again, again a sixth string root. And then what we're going to wrap up on is a D dominant 7th chord that's going to be built off that 2nd inversion process on the 4th guitar string. So that's all those chords. I'll play it down for you. It goes like this. So that takes care of 5th to 10th fret region. Now our last region is going to have to really squish up here high on the neck for these ones because we're going to be dealing with 10th to 15th. Now normally you wouldn't play a lot of chord progressions this high on the neck, but it doesn't hurt to do some practice, you know, just for fun. <laughs> you just nail these chord shapes down. So we're going to start off with a G major, se or G major 7 uh, built off that second inversion process. And it's going to have that uh, 12th fret position there for us. And then what we're going to do is stay in 12th. We're going to use the uh, B minor 7 chord. It's really squished up up there, but it's going to be the 5th string root minor 7. That's the one with no 5th in it. Then we're going to go up half step and just have that C major 7. Again, all these 12th position, every single one of them, it's all 12th position. That's getting too squished up like that. You notice I changed the fingering a little bit up here. Second and third fingers are taking those upper notes. And then index is doing a bar. It's just because it's, the frets are so close together. Okay, and then uh, that's the C major 7. Last chord is going to be a D dominant 7th. We're going to do that one back a little bit off the 6th string root. It's the closest D that we got in this uh, range here. So we're going to take that off 6th string, 10th fret D. And that's going to give us our D dominant 7th. So here's all the changes. is really squished up up there in fact you know we were talking earlier had to change the 
fretting layout of the B minor seven just to be able to compensate in that region of the neck. Keep that kind of stuff in mind. You know, you may have to redo how you make some of the fretboard positions or fingering layouts, I should say, uh, in this um, really high region, you know, if you're dealing up here with some ideas. Uh, there's uh, basically no limit to how you can get into practicing ideas on this. You can mix and match triads, you know, you could add in some extended chords, you could put in, you know, altered chords into the mix. Um, but short uh, chord progressions played with a lot of different voicings, you know, in those three main fretboard regions is really going to give you a great perspective of the neck and uh, it's going to maybe take a bit of time, be prepared for that. You know, if you really want to bust your chops and <laughs> learn all this stuff across the entire guitar neck, might take a few months. Uh, if you're in a band and you're jamming, keep in mind, go with the shapes that you feel the most comfortable with in the beginning. And then over time, as you get better, you know, maybe after two or three months go by, and you got some really good chops with the other shapes, then start integrating those live into your, uh, into your live show as well. Anyway, that takes care of the entire study. Good luck with it. It's a big project if you want to get all the chords down on the neck, but this type of an approach certainly helps cut the time down on learning. Well, you know, chord practice tends to be an often overlooked area for a lot of guitar players. It's, you know, kind of funny in a way because because rhythm guitar makes up at least 80% uh, or more of what you know we actually do when you join a band you start playing guitar in a you know a typical top 40 group or something like that so we really need to know our chords you just can't get around it if you want to really take this instrument seriously and you know if your band plays a little jazz or maybe has a little bit of soul music in the mix some funk maybe some R&B you know in the old set list you're gonna really need to be well prepared on playing seventh quality chords as well that's where those neck mapping and uh, all the rhythm studies that I've covered in this lesson uh, can really pay off for you. So learn your new chords in each of those neck regions that we discussed. Uh, so, you know, down the road, when you're applying your chords, you're practicing them all over the neck. And also be sure to create some short chord studies for yourself as well. Practicing those kind of chord studies is really helpful. That work will uh, really pay off for you in the long run. And uh, that's where you want to be with these chords is to the point where they're very automatic. You don't have to think too hard when you need to jam them up. Anyway, that's about all the time that I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. And if at all possible, please uh, you know, give a small donation towards the channel to help out with all the expenses around here. Otherwise, have yourself a really great week and I will catch up with you next time. Bye for now. If you'd like to learn the modes and really get an understanding how they can be used musically to write songs, play a solo, or compose melody lines, then you're in luck. My ebook, Using the Major Scale Modes, is a comprehensive manuscript outlining exactly how modes are used both in harmony and to compose melodic ideas. Over 50 pages of scale patterns, example progressions, and music theory all create one of the most comprehensive methods on the modes available. Using the major scale modes is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.